Tesla CEO Elon Musk might be the most ambitious businessman of our age. I think he almost certainly is. He's already pioneered the zero emission electric car with Tesla Motors. Now he's tackling solar power, taking on the biggest obstacle to making solar a larger source of the energy supply in this country. The fact that, well, the sun is not always out. When it's nighttime or it's cloudy out, solar panels aren't collecting too much energy. But Musk has a new solution for consumers. The Tesla Powerwall, a battery for your home that stores up the electricity generated from solar panels, quite literally saving it for a rainy day. It can only store up to 10 kilowatt hours, which is probably not enough to power an entire home. According to Tesla, your refrigerator alone eats up about half that much over the course of a day. But it appears to be an enormous step toward making solar a viable alternative on a grand scale to fossil fuels. And it's not just a pipe dream. The Powerwall, already set to ship this summer, and the 10 kilowatt hour model goes for the relatively affordable price of $3,500, plus the cost of insulation and connection to solar panels. Musk also unveiled a commercial version of the battery called the Power Pack, which in his words is designed to be infinitely scalable. With 160 million Power Packs, you can transition the United States. Okay? With 900 million, you can transition the world. You can basically make all electricity generation in the world uh, renewable, so, and primarily solar. Joining me now, David Roberts, staff writer for Vox.com and tech consultant, business advisor Shelley Palmer. Um, David, let me start with you. You just wrote this piece uh, about um, solar being essentially inevitable. What, how, big was the, how big a problem is the battery problem? How far did Musk get with this announcement? Well, I think mostly what he did with the announcement is open people's minds to the possibility. I mean, currently batteries are still uh, too big and bulky and hold too little power to to make solar dominant more than a sort of a, a you know an add-on to uh, other forms of power. But you know, as, this, as technology continues to develop, solar cells are going to get smaller and more efficient. And batteries also, and, and other forms of energy storage, are going to get more and more smaller and efficient. And eventually, it won't be some big thing stuck on your wall. It will be integrated into your home. And the solar cells, too, will be integrated into your home. And your home itself, buildings themselves, will become harvesters of energy and storers of energy unobtrusively and, and cheaply. Shelley, part of the challenge here uh, is, is, this, is, is this, the problem of sort of consumer adoption, right? And what we've seen right now is um, solar is going through this tremendous revolution because the price has just dropped in this way that we've that, uh, totally unprecedented, right? right? Um, but there's also this kind of viral effect. There's actually studies out that say people that see, have neighbors with solar panels are more likely to get solar panels. I think this is about a mission and a vision, right? If you are part of this idea that you want to live a sustainable life, right. a Tesla car is a lifestyle right. and the Powerwall is a lifestyle choice. Right. It is too expensive, but you know what's interesting? It's right on the cusp of being financially sensible. It's not there, right. it's right on the cusp. But today, as I love to say, is the slowest rate of technological change you will ever experience for the rest of your life. Right. And so it's gonna get there, but right this minute, truly, there's this whole, problem with um, total continuous output where you literally, literally can't get enough electricity out of this thing to run your house. Right. Forget about that. Right. You will be able to do it. And you're right. It is slightly viral, but it's a lifestyle choice. Yeah. So, so David, here, here's the thing that you, the arg argument you made in the piece is it, w hammer home why solar is so distinct from everything else. Why it's, it, it, it's not like any other kind of power. Sure. Uh, every other form of, of commercial electricity generation works basically the same way. It translates mechanical force into electrical current by, by uh, uh, spinning a turbine. Right. So everything else, coal, natural gas, nuclear, wind, hydro, they all are about spinning turbines. Solar PV is the only commercial form of electricity that creates electricity directly from sunlight. That means without moving parts, which reduces the, the, the upkeep and operational costs. And, and it's the only form of power that can eventually be scaled down to virtually any size. I mean, uh, it, you know, Musk emphasized that it can be scaled up, but can also be scaled down, I mean, theoretically, to a, a square inch. It's so also, you can imagine solar becoming ubiquitous in a way right. that no other form of power uh, could be. What's really important here is not can you power an American household or use this in lieu of a backup generator. Right. If you think about the distributed nature of solar power worldwide in developing and emerging nations where there are no power grids, right. this takes on an entire new sort of 
you know, possible set of possibilities where you've got, look, there are cheap batteries and there are cheaper batteries. This is the cheapest battery that does what it does we've seen in a while. And my suspicion is once the gigafactory is put up into, you know, full capacity where that's what they're doing all day long at Tesla, they're making batteries. Right. This is going to become affordable to the point where it makes sense. And I, it, the gigafactory, which is, is set to come to Nevada, there was a big deal announcement. They're going to make these things to make batteries. And, and David, I, I had someone tell me that they actually thought that Tesla was really Tesla, the Tesla company really is a battery factory. Uh, it's a battery company and a battery factory. The thing that they understood that people are going to need in the future are batteries. And they made they had to fix the engineering, the battery problem to make their car. But the car in some ways is sort of ancillary. It's actually the battery that is the business. That's right. I mean, I think the best way to look at electric cars, in some sense, is as portable forms of uh, electricity storage. So you can imagine a future where the, all these electric cars are hooked up to the grid. And so grid operators, when they need extra power, can draw power from all these distributed cars. And, uh, and when they don't need power, can return power to those batteries. So it becomes a sort of distributed form of storage. Yeah. And, and, and you wonder also how much... Um, how much this sort of effect of someone setting targets the way Musk has impact competitors, right? It's going to be really important because you've got a battery industry. Look, we have a very fast technological uh, advancement curve. The two slowest things literally have been battery technology. Look at your cell phones. Look at your power yeah. everywhere. It's the they, biggest fight. The, Everyone's right, trying to shrink, shrink, shrink. You run around an airport. Charge, charge, right, charge, charge. Right, I mean, right, everybody's right. trying to charge their phone. And of course, um, solar cells also because if you had 100% absorptive uh, material, it would be invisible and it would be the greatest solar cell ever. But we're not there yet. Right. So these have to come along. This is a great step forward. I love the fact that it's Elon Musk. He's the Tony Stark of our age. Yeah, he's... <laughs> I love it.